Hello everybody, Ignatius Sell Jackson CPA here with a video ending Financial Literacy Month. This is the last video for Financial Literacy Month and in today's video what we're going to talk to you about is how can you invest your dollars to get the best earnings potential, uh, potentially, uh, and to grow your savings, retirement accounts, whatever the case is, however you decide ultimately to invest for the long term so that you can hopefully build some financial freedom, some generational wealth, and all that great stuff. And so we're gonna talk about that in this today's video. Like, subscribe, listen in, stay tuned. We'll be right back in a second. All right, see you soon. Welcome back to today's video about investing and what types of things can you potentially invest in. So, you know, we have a few ideals of some things to consider and think about uh, to make your investments. Okay, some of these will give you better returns than others, um, but it's ultimately up to you to decide what makes sense for you and your business. Okay, or you, you personally or you and your business, depending on how you ultimately decide to invest. And so we wanted to just touch base on a couple different topics. All right, and talk about that. So as you've heard during all, a lot of the videos throughout the month, we've talked a lot about, you know, retirement planning. We've talked about compound interest. We've talked about uh, mortgages. We've talked about, you know, just general financial stuff other items that are uh, important to your business. We've also talked about cryptocurrency, okay? And so, you know, we wanted to just also touch on some other general topics that you can think about in order, in terms of things that you could potentially do to invest and save towards your future, okay? Um, and ultimately these, thinking outside the box a little bit is how you're going to ultimately build, you know, substantial wealth, okay? And the key is that I want you to remember Whenever you think about investing is think about diversification, okay? Think about how you're going to diversify your portfolio is what we're gonna call it, okay? You're gonna have a certain percentage in you know, real estate, certain percentage in crypto, certain percentage in crowdfunding, et cetera, et cetera. So kind of think through what it is, how you wanna divide up your portfolio, take a look at what you have available and think about how you wanna uh, divide that up. And that's ultimately what you're going to do in terms of going out there and investing and getting a return on your dollars, okay? Um, there's a lot of different things you could do, a lot of different strategies you can employ, and so it's all just a matter of finding out what makes sense for you and what your risk appetite is, okay? Now, we'll start with some of the safer options, right? Which is the stock market, okay? So a fairly safe option, you know, the safest option is probably investing in bonds, okay? But those are not going to give you those massive returns that we're talking about that's really going to help you to grow your retirement or grow your savings, okay? So that's why I don't really spend, want to spend a whole lot of time on bonds. If you're at retirement age already, then you should probably think about getting more into bonds, getting those low returns, maybe some certificates of deposit, stuff like that, where you can get, uh, you know, 2 to 3% returns, very safe, very secure. Uh, you don't want your retirement to go away, okay? That's where you should probably be in that scenario, or at least for a certain percentage of your retirement in that scenario, okay? To make sure you always have something there. But if you're not at that stage, like the majority of my viewers probably are not, um, and you're still younger, uh, you know, in your 30s and your, you know, low 40s, um, and you still have some time left to accumulate some wealth, then let's get going on some cooler stuff, okay? So starting with stocks, yes, you can invest in the stock market. You can, you know, do ETFs, do mutual funds, etc. My recommendation, oh, before I get too deep into this, let me just clarify. I'm not a registered financial advisor or anything like that, so I'm not giving you investment advice with this video. I'm just simply giving you some thoughts and ideals on what you could potentially do um, to invest your dollars. It ultimately is up to you and if you feel like you'd like to consult to a professional financial advisor or anything like that, definitely up to you. 
my recommendation would be a fiduciary financial advisor, one that doesn't get paid based off a of commission, but gets paid based off just time that they spend talking to you, uh, would be my recommendation because that ultimately will mean that you'll get probably the best investment options because if you go to someone who gets paid based off a percentage of the investment, they're basically only going to sell you whatever they're selling you, whatever's going to make them money, okay? But anyways, back to what I was saying. So my recommendation with stocks, if you want to do stocks, uh, will be one of two things, either individual stocks or ETFs, okay? You could also do some low fund mutual funds, like uh, there's some Vanguard funds and things like that that are out there that are pretty low fee. But generally speaking, if you do like an ETF or you invest in stocks, those are going to be fairly low fee um, type of funds, but look into those, okay? Individual stocks are virtually fee-less at this point, but they are probably some more riskier side of the stock market in terms of, you know, you don't know if it's going to go up or down in any given day. But there's a lot of opportunity if you do individual stocks, okay? So if you like the idea of investing in the stock market and you want to be safer, maybe go ETF route. If you are, want to be a little bit riskier, go the individual stock route, pick, pick a couple that you like, put a few thousand into them, see how it goes when it, you make a profit, sell it, etc., etc. okay? So that's an option, all right? So let's start to go into some slightly more risky options, okay? So let's think about maybe instead of just investing in the stock market, maybe you give some loans out, okay? So you can give actually personal loans out to people. Uh, there's various platforms out there that do this. Um, uh, one example is Lending Club, another one is Prosper, okay? So you can go to one of those platforms, they'll let you uh, sign up for an account, you put some dollars into it, and you basically lend it out to people uh, for a, a return of interest, okay? And they pay you interest back over time. All right, and so these are sometimes, uh, depends on the, the person, sometimes high grade, sometimes low grade. So it just depends on what, what you're doing in terms of what you want to do there, okay? Um, but that's an option, okay? And I know some people who get some pretty good returns doing this, to be honest. You can also give out loans for real estate, okay? Which is a secured asset. You have a, a deed or a title to the property, and basically you'll be able to foreclose on that property um, you know, with your mortgage or with your uh, deed in the event that the person doesn't comply with the mortgage, okay? Um, so that's a more of a secured asset. You can also do secured loans, um, you know, personal loans where maybe you're attaching it to a car or something like that. So there are some different ways that you can do all this, okay? So that's an op another, another option, a little more risky, but something to, to consider. You can also invest in cryptocurrency, which I talked about on the last video, so I'm not going to get too far into that. It is fairly risky, right? Because we don't, it's got big swings up and down, just depends on the day of the week that <laughs> you're, you're in there looking at the Bitcoin and whatnot. <clears throat> but uh, definitely something to think about and consider is, you know, cryptocurrency because it's, it's the craze right now, you know? Bitcoin's had a huge run. Ethereum's having a pretty good run. Uh, Litecoin is probably the third most popular one. So a lot of options, a lot of opportunities there to invest in Bitcoin or any other uh, cryptocurrencies, okay? Um, real estate, real estate is, you know, maybe a little bit of a safer option, okay? Um, that's, a, that's something that you can definitely invest in. Um, it requires usually a little more dollars down to get involved in real estate. But the key there is find some like-minded people who want to invest with you and partner up. So real estate is actually a pretty good um, asset to partner up with someone on, okay? Um, because then it requires less capital on your part, and maybe you can go out there and get more deals instead of putting all your money into one deal and diversifying a little bit, okay? Because if that one deal goes bad and you lose your $50,000 or whatever it is you have to invest into it, that's not going to be good for your financial future. But if you split it up into two different deals, 25,000 each, and one goes bad and you lose 25,000, well, you still have the other 25,000 that's hopefully doing well. Chances of you having multiple real estate deals going bad is pretty slim, but it can happen. Um, uh, but hopefully, you know, you, you, you don't have that happen to you. <laughs> okay, so real estate tends to be a little bit more secure, a little bit more safe. It appreciates really well over the long term, okay? It's a great investment uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, everyone should have a little piece of real estate outside of just their personal residence, okay? You should always kind of have something that you're actually making money off of in the real estate field. And if you don't want to do like an actual purchase of a house, 
there's various funds out there, um, kind of like REITs, um, where you can invest just a portion of your dollars into it and be kind of an investor as a, as a part of it, okay? Uh, one example is Diversa Fund, okay? As an example, where they invest basically in multifamily projects and you can go invest in them. One locally here in Arizona is called Neighborhood Ventures, where you can go and basically invest in local projects, okay? Um, and they use a, re a regulation crowdfunding exemption that's here in Arizona, an interstate exemption, meaning it's only for Arizona residents. Okay, but uh, you can basically do that uh, unless you're an accredited investor, in which case you can still get involved in their fund, um, but you just have to go through the accredited investor route if you're out of state. Okay, and so th there's a lot of funds out there that are doing real estate type stuff and real estate type deals. So that's something you can think about and consider as well. If you if you don't feel like going and buying your own property and you don't want to do any work on it, things like that, you can go and get one of these transactions and one of these deals where you're basically a part of a fund, a part of a pool of investors and do it that way, okay? So those are a few cool options that you can consider, all right? Now, the other thing I wanna mention is crowdfunding. So I kind of hinted on it a little bit with you know, what we were just talking about. So Diversa Fund is a crowdfunding campaign, okay? Neighborhood Ventures is also a crowdfunding campaign, but it goes further than that. These guys are more safe plays because they're doing real estate, but there's more risky plays in crowdfunding where it's a startup company, where the company is just beginning um, or they've been around for a couple of years, they're just not quite profitable yet and they need to raise some dollars to get them to that level where they hopefully can become profitable. So that's what, this, that's what the crowdfunding is kind of out there and designed for. And basically anybody can invest in crowdfunding now. Okay, this started a few years ago. It's a pretty awesome uh, tool that's out there. Not a lot of people know about it, but there's various sites you can go to, to to look into that and to consider that. Republic being one of them, WeFunder being another, and Start Engine being another. Now I will probably say Start Engine is probably, Start Engine and WeFunder are probably the, the two largest. Republic is probably a, a third, close third, okay, to those three, so, but those are definitely the three largest crowdfunding campaigns that I know, or sites that I know that are out there. But those are great opportunities for you to go out there and invest um, in some various businesses. Pick something that you, you feel really close to. Pick some kind of social cause or some kind of um, you know thing that you think will ultimately make it because it's going to be the next big thing. Um, you know, personal story, I had an investment in a company called Mevo. This is through crowdfunding. And I got a notification a few months ago that they had basically closed on a acquisition. They were got, they were getting acquired by Logitech. This is all public information now, so I can disclose it. Um, but ultimately, they got bought up by Logitech all within a year of me making my investment, and I basically doubled my money uh, with the potential of an earnout where you know we can potentially get even more than double our money. And so that's the whole key to crowdfunding: is you take a few bets, you take a few risk, um, and a few of them are eventually going to pan out. Okay, so excuse me. Um, but ultimately, what you want to do is if you're going to do the crowdfunding thing, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Same thing as anything else, diversify a little bit. Pick like five to ten uh, crowdfunding campaigns. Let's say you got like five thousand dollars to invest for a year. Okay, pick five to ten campaigns and invest between five hundred thousand dollars in those five to ten campaigns. Okay, and bam, let's hopefully one of them just kicks off and takes off and really makes some good profit and some good money and you become rich off of it. Um, so think this is the kind of stuff, by the way, that now granted on a larger scale, they that big dollars, right? But this is the kind of stuff that, you know, you got popular people like Mitt Romney who went through and did stuff like this. He invested in some startups and really paid off big, like big, big. I'm talking about millions of dollars. And ultimately he ended up, you know, having all this done inside of his Roth IRA, by the way, uh, which is another thing we're going to talk about here. Um, but yeah, he did all this inside of his Roth IRA. Has like probably a multi-million dollar Roth IRA at this point. I, I, I don't know the exact number. It's probably like 30, 40 million. Nobody knows exactly what it is at. But, you know, when he went through the presidential campaign, that's how we found out that he had that much inside of the Roth IRA. Um, but who knows what it's at at this point. I mean, it's continued to grow, I'm sure. And so it can be $100 million, you know, potentially. So you just never know.
Um, but there are people who have that much inside of a Roth IRA. It's because they invested it wisely into things that have huge earnings potential. Okay. Um, so crowdfunding is another great option, another great tool that's available to you. Um, so definitely look into that. It's called Regulation CF, regulation, which stands for Regulation Crowdfunding and Regulation A+. Those are the two big uh, types of crowdfunding uh, investments that you can do out there. Regulation CF and Regulation A+. Okay. So, you know, those sites that I mentioned have that. There's other sites as well. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't think it's one of those three. Those are just the three biggest, which means they probably have the most deals that come through their sites just because they're uh, some of the bigger players in the space. Okay. Um, the other thing I'll, I'll mention that is probably one of the more risky things out, out of all of this is just starting your own business. Okay. So if you start your own business, you invest your, your dollars into starting your own business. That's a powerful, powerful play because not only now do you get to, you know, potentially have some great income coming in, a great source of income, maybe you can replace your W-2 job to where you don't have to work in that corporate environment anymore or the government, or whatever field you're in, okay? You can now have a business of your own, whatever it's, whatever industry, construction, accounting, uh, paralegal, lawyer, uh, doctor, anything that you can think of that you can reasonably get a business going, that's a powerful, powerful investment strategy because ultimately you're getting income coming in, okay? Um, and that income that you're earning, especially if you have another job that you have um, uh, as your full-time job, you really probably don't even need this income from the business. So you just basically start investing that business. Maybe you're putting it away into a 401k, um, you know, putting it into other you know, deferred vehicles and other investment type strategies and things like that. And that's going to ultimately just help you grow and grow your wealth even more. Plus, you get to write off a bunch of expenses inside of the business. So all the, ex not all, let me clarify my statement. Let me not give you too much hope here. Okay, a good chunk of your expenses that you're paying personally right now that you probably can't deduct on your taxes because you're a W-2 employee, you can do when you are a business owner. Okay, you can justify deductions as ordinary necessary business expenses when you're a business owner such as cell phone expenses, yeah, portion of, of your home for your home office, mileage for your car, um, uh, I don't know, uh, there's all kinds of things. You can travel, you know, trips, to go to conferences for education and experiences and stuff like that. All kinds of things that you can write off inside of your business that you're probably doing anyways, but not really getting any benefit from it from a tax standpoint. So having a business is a great tax strategy. And you can even own a business inside of your retirement account, okay? But it's not gonna be tax-free growth. You're gonna pay some taxes on it, but it won't be nearly as much as if you owned it outside of your retirement account, okay? So there's there's, there's all kinds of ways that you can do this um, and still have um, a great financial freedom number and getting to that financial independence and growing your wealth, etc. okay? So owning a business, think about that, okay? And then the last thing that I kind of have on my list in terms of investment strategies, and then we're going to touch on why it is so important to do a lot of your investing inside of retirement accounts, because I really, really am passionate about that. My shirt, paying your kids. Okay. So I might've touched on this on one of my other videos for the month, but I want to just reiterate it. This is essential. Okay. Don't think of it as giving your kids a free ride because they have to work for it. Okay. Don't just act like your kids are on the payroll and not actually have them do anything. That's absurd. Make your kids actually work for it. Okay. I don't care what they do. Shred some papers. Uh, you know, enter some data into the QuickBooks file. Um, I don't know. Ch cut some trees down at the rental properties. Um, you know, uh, doing the leaves and doing the yard work for the rental properties. There's all kinds of things you can think of where the kids are helping you out with your businesses, whether it's real estate, whether it's your, you know, uh, doctor's office, whether it's your, um, I don't know, accounting firm, consulting firm, all kinds of things that your kids can do to help you with your business. You just have to think, you know, through it and think about what can my kid do that is reasonable that is something that I would normally pay someone to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and have them do it for, not for free, but I'm gonna pay them a, a reasonable wage based on what they're doing, but it's not really gonna cost me anything because guess what? I was gonna pay for all the crap anyways, okay? <laughs> so now you're talking about <clears throat> um, getting a tax deduction 
inside your business for something that your kids are helping you out with. But guess what? Your kid don't actually pay any taxes on that, especially when they're under the age of 18. Okay. And if they make less than $12,000 a year, it's 12,000 and some change. I'm just going to say 12,000 for simplicity here. They make less than 12,000 a year and they don't pay any income taxes. And guess what? Since they're under 18, they also don't pay any payroll taxes. Okay. So powerful, powerful strategy. And then on top of that, what you can do is contribute to a Roth IRA on basically on their behalf because now they have earned income. Okay. And you can do up to $6,000 per year into a Roth IRA. But think about that for a second. Let's think about that for a second. I just contributed to Roth IRA. What's usually the downside to doing a Roth IRA? You have to pay taxes on the money. You don't get a tax deduction for contributing to it. Okay. Well, if you think about what I just said, the kid never paid income taxes to begin with. So what just happened? Oh my gosh, we just got a bunch of money put into an account where the child will never have to pay any taxes ever as long as it sits there until 59 and a half. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me clarify that. The growth, as long as the growth and the earnings sit there until 59 and a half, you can still, just like any other person who has a Roth account, pull out the money that you put into the Roth as your contribution anytime you want tax and penalty free. So let's say you wanted to save for your child's college, for example. Okay. Instead of putting it into a uh, 529 plan or a covered L plan, which the kid may or may not go to school. You got to think about that. It's a real possibility. Some children don't want to go to college. It's just the way it is. But if you put it into a 529 plan or a Coverdell plan, you're kind of stuck because those are supposed to be used for education. So, but if you put it into Roth IRA, you have a lot more flexibility. You know, if they decide not to go to college, great. They got a head start on their retirement. All right, leave it all in there. Just let it grow. Good to go. If they do go to college, great. You can pull out the contributions and utilize that for uh, purposes of, um, in terms of uh, paying for college, okay? But hopefully they get a scholarship, you know, to help out with some of those costs so they don't have to take too much out of that Roth IRA to help them pay for college. So great, great strategy to invest. And plus, if you do some of these other things while you're inside of your kid's Roth IRA, you're going to exponentially grow it anyways. All right. Now let's talk about Roth IRAs in general, in retirement in general. Powerful, powerful, powerful tools, okay? If you did your taxes this year and you invested in crypto or you bought stocks in taxable accounts, you would probably noticed that you ended up paying a bunch of taxes that you didn't think that you were going to have to pay, okay? That's the downside to investing inside of taxable accounts. Taxable accounts are basically personal accounts. Think accounts that are just in your name <clears throat> that use your social security number, stuff like that. Those are taxable accounts. You pay taxes on any earnings and any growth from those accounts. But the downside is if you have losses, you don't get to write off all the losses. The most you can do per year is $3,000 in losses per year. Okay. If you have net loss, but it does carry over. So you get $3,000 every year that it carries over, but nevertheless, that's the best you can do. So it's not the greatest thing to invest in taxable accounts. I mean, sure, you could do a little bit that way, but my recommendation, nine times out of 10, is to do more investing inside of your retirement accounts. Don't just trust the stock market. Don't just put it to the stock market. Do the crowdfunding, do the crypto, do the loans, do the real estate, do uh, a business. All those things that I talked about earlier in this video, you can do all of that inside of your retirement accounts whether it's a traditional IRA, Roth IRA, solo 401k, uh, Roth 401k, SEP IRA, simple IRA, um, HSA, health savings account, Coverdell IRA for education purposes. You can do it in all those accounts. Only, you can't do it in 529 because that's a state sponsor plan. But you can do all those IRAs, all the various IRAs that are out there. You can use do those and you can also do your 401k and you can also do your health savings account. Powerful, powerful stuff. Just imagine if you invested your health savings account into a project for crowdfunding, just throwing this out there, and that crowdfunding campaign took off, just took off. Let's say you had 10,000 in there and you invested it into a few crowdfunding campaigns and you had one that paid that went 50 times. Bam, you just made $50,000 potentially if you had a $1,000 investment in it. 
if you had two thousand, if it's a hundred thousand, I mean, you just made all this money, and it's never going to be taxed. Because the other the nice thing about HSAs is you don't you get a tax deduction when you put money in. Okay, so you get a tax deduction when you put money in, and you don't pay any taxes when you pull it out, as long as you pull it out for medical purposes. Okay, and the key to HSAs, by the way, um, I don't think I've mentioned this yet in, in the video series for this month, so I'll just note this here. I highly recommend that you not take out your expenses each year. Hold on to those bad boys, put them into a folder, or use an HSA custodian that kind of has a repository where you can store it electronically. Save it to a drive on a computer or in the cloud, like your, your email or something like that. But save all those receipts. Wait 10, 20 years, whatever, until you actually need the money. Then pull it out, okay? You can pull out your stuff from the HSA at any point. You don't have to do it the same year that you incurred it. <clears throat> it's a common misconception. You do not have to do it the same year that you incurred it. You can wait a period of time and pull it out at any point in the future, okay? So you can always get that reimbursement from your HSA. So think about that. Let's say you have some massive expense that comes up down the line and you don't know how you're gonna pay for it. Bam, you have that in the background. Oh, I can always just submit some of these bad boys, pull it out of my HSA, good to go. Then you can use that reimbursement for whatever you want because you've already paid for the medical expenses previously. So that's the strategy for the HSA. But ultimately, that's the key. Do more investing inside of your Roth IRA, traditional IRA, HSA, SEP IRA, 401k. I'm saying this multiple times because I really, really feel passionate about this. And then have your kids, maybe your spouse, others, family members, etc. You can all partner together with your retirement accounts and invest all your retirement accounts together. That way you're not taking on all the risk yourself. You know, you can do it with friends. You can do it with business partners, okay? There's certain rules and things you have to follow, but as long as you understand those rules and you work with someone that's competent in this area that can explain the rules to you and help to keep you out of trouble, you know, seek advice, ask questions, as long as you do that, you're going to be in so much better of a position. Because guess what? When you do this inside of all these accounts, you don't pay taxes off of the earnings with the exception of a business. You don't pay taxes off of passive investment income, loans, crowdfunding, uh, cryptocurrency, real estate. You don't pay taxes off of that, okay? Only on earned income, on active income, on business type income, okay? Everything that would be considered active or business income as a personal investment, similarly, is going to be that same thing inside of your retirement account. So examples would be flipping houses. Unfortunately, that is an active item, okay? Mining. Unfortunately, for cryptocurrency mining, that is an active item, okay? You're not going to be able to avoid all taxes, all right? Um, let me think. What's some common misconceptions there? Uh, Airbnbs, when you do hospitality-type services, like you do daily housekeeping and you come clean the rooms and stuff like that, that becomes a business active type item, okay? So there's other things that would become active income just based on how you're doing it, but ultimately there's a way to get around paying a large amount of taxes. And the way you do it is by setting up a blocker corporation, a C corporation that blocks the income. Now this is still a good strategy for the time being. If they change the tax laws, keep, keep, keep in touch with the tax laws because if they change the tax laws, then this may change a little bit some of the strategies related to this. But if you use that blocker corporation with a 21% corporate tax rate, that's all that you would pay is basically 21% corporate tax rate on the income. The rest of it flows through to you personally tax free. Okay. As a dividend um, into the retirement account. All right. So bam. I mean, just, just think about this. Just think, if you were to do some of this stuff, if you started putting your investments in your retirement accounts and your retirement accounts started being your investing entities and everything for what you need to do, just think how exponentially you can grow. If you don't have to pay taxes as you go, you grow your money so much faster, okay? So much faster. The compound interest calculations I gave you, they only work when you don't end up paying any taxes on the growth. 
you know, if you end up paying taxes, now you got money coming out of there, you got expenses coming out of there, it hurts your ability to grow it as fast as possible. That's why it's important to do these inside of your retirement accounts. Self-direct your retirement. It is important, it is essential, it is key to financial freedom and the American dream and generational wealth and whatever else you can think of. <laughs> it's a key, all right? Plus, it's good and it's positive because Social Security, let me tell you, is probably not gonna be around and if it is, it's gonna be something very, very small by the time most people like my age and younger than me get to retirement age, okay? So uh, just think through that. You're gonna be spending a lot of time uh, waiting around for Social Security if you don't have <laughs> Um, any retirement plans, uh, any retirement saved up, all right? So anyways, that's how we were gonna bridge this wealth gap in the country. We're gonna take a bite out of it, invest wisely. Um, please, please, please think about it, consider it, and don't forget to pay yourself first. Hashtag pay yourself first. I wanna thank you for tuning in for the April Financial Literacy Month series. You know, I'm really passionate about this stuff. I really want to educate people. I really want to, you know, hopefully get more people to, to, to think about investing a little more wisely, to think about, you know, saving for themselves, to think about paying themselves first. Pay, hashtag pay yourself first, right? I really want people to do that. So I thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you watched all the videos. Hopefully you watched the whole series. If you didn't, please go back and watch the rest of the series. Um, you know, uh, we, we did do a raffle for the month um, for watching these videos. Um, again, don't forget to subscribe or like or comment one of the videos. Um, and the more videos that you like, comment, and subscribe to, um, guess what? The more chances you have of winning one of the raffle prizes, okay? And so if you're just, you know, watching this, um, by all means, this is your last chance because this is going to be posted on the last day of the month. So this is an opportunity for you to go through and like. Uh, subscribe and comment on some of the videos and you know share it with your friends as well um, please do share with your friends even if you don't want to be entered in for the raffle share with your friends help them to learn help them to get inspired that's ultimately the goal of what we're doing these videos for I'm not gonna stop here just because financial literacy month is over we're gonna continue to do videos maybe not quite as frequently but we'll definitely continue to do videos um, to again educate you on some other ideals, strategies, taxes, etc. So definitely subscribe to the channel, stay tuned, um, and we'll be back for more later. We'll be right. Have a good day. Bye.